Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. I'd like to talk to you about fireworks. I love fireworks, me. The bigger the display, the better. I recently had the fortune to see one of the world's largest displays, the New Year fireworks in Madeira. As I watched them, I couldn't stop thinking about one thing. How would you paint them in watercolour? So I've had a little play and I've come up with a few ideas and this is the result. I'm going to start by roughly planning out my scene with a 2B pencil. When fireworks explode, they create circular shapes. So that's my starting point. It's important for the circles to be of different sizes and distributed as randomly around the paper as possible. Overlapping is good since this will help to reinforce the sustained nature of the display. Odd single fireworks that don't overlap would seem rather isolated and create a display that was underwhelming and not so impressive. Fireworks create many small points of light that appear illuminated against the backdrop of a dark sky. In watercolour terms, this means lots of small highlights against a dark background. Well, there are several different ways to achieve this, but none quite as effective and efficient as using art masking fluid. Using the circles as my guide, I'm applying blobs of masking fluid with tails that point into the centre of the circle. The objective is to make it look like all of those points of light have originated from a single point and are expanding outwards. To increase the illusion of movement, it's important for the leading edge of each highlight to appear larger and more bulbous than its tail. Fireworks are going off all over the place, some exploding high up, some nearer to the ground. In some cases we would only see the tail end of the explosion, whilst others further away from us would be revealed in their entirety. And don't forget to include freshly launched rockets still reaching upwards towards the heavens yet to explode into a flower of illumination. Once I'm happy with my layout and the masking fluid has been left to dry, I'm ready to throw some paint at the scene. It's going to be a wet in wet wash, so I need to work quickly. After wetting the paper as thoroughly as possible, I'm going to start by applying cadmium yellow. Fireworks create a lot of smoke, and smoke reflects and disperses the light from the exploding rockets. These are the effects that I'll have in mind as I'm applying the paint. I'm going to be applying the dark tones of the night sky very soon. But before I get to that, 
I want to establish some warm, multicoloured areas of vibrant colour. Cadmium yellow, cadmium red and alizarin crimson. I'm working quickly so that the colours can fuse together in an unpredictable but hopefully visually interesting way. Firework displays take place at night, so I'm going to need a really dark tone to complete my wet in wet wash. For this, I'm going to use the two colours that I always use for my darkest tones, Burnt Umber and French Ultramarine. In addition, I want to add a subtle touch of warmth to the sky. For this, I'm going to mix in a bit of alizarin crimson. Once the wash is dry, it's time to remove the masking fluid. This can be an anxious moment. I've seen masking fluid mercilessly strip the surface of a wash right off. If you're lucky, it'll come off cleanly and without any bother at all. If you're unlucky and it looks like it's going to give you problems, one way that you can increase the odds in your favour is to make sure that you rub in the direction of the mask's shape and not across it. The highlights are looking good, but they're a little too clean in places. I want to rough the scene up a bit expand upon the smoke idea and give some of the highlights a smoky glow. For this I'm going to need Woolies Wonderbrush. Any stiff bristled brush will do of course. The technique is the same though whatever you choose to use. Dampen your brush and lightly scrub out the area of smoke. When you've done dab it dry with a piece of tissue paper. Go easy on the scrubbing. If you go at it like a bull at a gate, you'll take out too much pigment and all subtlety will be lost. At this point, I'm going to use another method of creating fine highlights. This time, I'm scratching out with the blade of a craft knife. Care should be taken not to damage the surface of the paper too much or indeed to whip off a couple of finger ends. Highlights should vary in length and position and too many repetitive patterns should be avoided at all cost. I'm using it to scratch out tiny sparks of burnt out rockets as they plummet to the earth like golden rain. Finally I'm going to add some colour to the highlights. Leaving many of them white will maintain the impact, but a range of warm colours using cadmium red and cadmium yellow also helps to mellow the scene a little.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that little firework fiesta. Painting fireworks in watercolour presents us with a number of challenges. But then figuring out solutions to those challenges is all part of the fun, isn't it? Until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.